and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. The United Nations Human Rights Council is adopting five more anti-Israel resolutions approved this past Friday. Both the United States and the United Kingdom criticized the decisions as biased, though Britain themselves voted in favor of two of the five. The UK's criticism against the UN's bias comes in the form of a warning stating that we are putting the Human Rights Council on notice. If things do not change in the future, we will adopt a policy of voting against all resolutions concerning Israel's conduct in the occupied Syrian and Palestinian territories. The five resolutions were regarding human rights in the occupied Syrian Golan, ensuring accountability and justice for all violations of international law in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination, the human rights situation in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, and a resolution flatly condemning Israel for human rights abuses. The United States and Togo were the only countries to consistently vote against all the resolutions. The UK's statements regarding the UN's obvious bias read in part that, quote, justice is blind and impartial. This selective focus on Israel is neither, end quote. Israel is the only country that is a permanent agenda item for discussion at the Human Rights Council. A report by Channel 2 claims that Israel may agree to limit settlement construction in return for permission to build a new residential area in the West Bank for the residents of the demolished Amona settlement. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu promised to build a new settlement for the residents of Amona, who had their homes demolished earlier this year, after the Israeli Supreme Court determined that they had been built on illegally and privately owned Palestinian land. Though Israel and Washington have yet to come to a decision regarding settlement construction, last week it was rumored that the Trump administration had proposed that Israel refrain from expanding settlements beyond the three major settlement blocks in Area C and that construction be confined to an annual quota. This comes barely a week after Special Envoy for International Negotiations Jason Greenblatt held high-level meetings in the region with Netanyahu and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Knesset member Bezalel Smotrich has called on religious soldiers to boycott a single round of the draft in protest of the integration of women in combat roles. Writing in the religious newspaper Besheva, Smotrich said, if the yeshivas and preparatory programs keep their students for several more months and skip one recruitment cycle, the IDF will ask itself what it prefers, quality motivated soldiers or mixed service at Bahad 1, referring to the IDF soldiers' training base. For his comments, Smotrich has received widespread condemnation. Within his own party, Minister of Education Naftali Bennett was quoted as saying that no group, and especially not religious Zionism, has the right to teach the IDF how to behave or to refuse to be conscripted. Erel Margalit from the Zionist Union sent a letter to Attorney General Avichai Mandelblit demanding that Smotrich be investigated for sedition. In the letter, he wrote, quote, There's no place in the state of Israel, as a Jewish and democratic country, for a public servant to call for open rebellion in the People's Army, end quote. The controversy comes at a time when the IDF has begun creating more options for women to serve in combat roles, including a pilot's program for women who wish to serve as combat soldiers within the tank corps. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Finance Minister Moshe Kahlon are scheduled to meet later this week. The two haven't met in over a week and are currently feuding over the future of the Israel Broadcasting Company. However, it doesn't seem that either party is willing to compromise, and the Prime Minister is still threatening to call for early elections if he doesn't get his way. Kahlon is vehemently opposed closing the IBA, saying that doing so would be a waste of funds, whereas Bibi wants to replace it with a different broadcasting company that would likely have less editorial freedom. Last week, Israeli media reported that the company's decision to hire veteran news anchor Geula Evan had greatly motivated the Prime Minister's decision. Evan is married to Gideon Saar, a former interior and education minister who resigned from the Likud in 2014, but is expected to make a political comeback and is considered by many political insiders as a viable candidate against Netanyahu in the Likud primaries. As of yet, Netanyahu hasn't scheduled updated communications minister Tzachi Anegbi or tourism minister Yariv Levin in regards to holding meetings, and Kahlon has said that he hasn't spoken to the prime minister since last Friday. Israeli President Reuven Rivlin, after meeting with Vietnamese President Tran Dai Quan last week, has reportedly requested the help of the Southeast Asian nation in international forums like the United Nations. Rivlin said during the official meeting that, quote, we are friends, and we ask you as friends to consider Vietnam's vote in international institutions. I'm of course not asking you to go against your heart, but saying that Jerusalem is not part of the state of Israel is like saying that Hanoi is not part of Vietnam, end quote. The two also discussed trade, the military, and the future of the two-state solution. 
Israel and Vietnam share many military trade agreements, with Israel supplying the country with upgrades on their tanks, drones, the rocket arsenal, aerial defense systems, and more. Despite the strong economic ties between Vietnam and Israel, however, Rivlin's request doesn't seem so out of place, as Vietnam's United Nations voting record historically has been hostile to the Jewish state. Just in 2016, Vietnam voted in favor of four Human Rights Council resolutions against Israel. The UNHRC has just adopted five more resolutions this past Friday. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. <laughs>